So here we are again. You're with me, Terrence Prescott Barnes, and I'm going to take you through how the Galactic Forces came to be. The Galactic Forces were developed before outer space opened to the general public for insurance purposes, mostly, but doing this allowed them to get a first-hand experience with preparing for the Utopia Protocol because mankind was growing at an exponential rate of fuck y'all literally. They had to come up with a solution for overpopulation. Doing this allowed mankind to hold their horses, literally. Figuring out a way to talk sense into the masses was the dawn of a new era. Mankind immediately started flourishing when a sense of para, too much, phrase, was developed. This helped with keeping a projection of space pirates extremely low at the beginning of man's journey through the universe. This allowed the galactic forces to set up shop and keep positions like a clock around each galaxy. They began to set up three waves of space station slash colonies, a clock-like formation at X, Y, and Z axes, one derivative to Mercury's orbit, asteroids' orbit, and Pluto's orbit. That formation eventually evolved into five waves brought upon by the first spear of humans. That formation eventually evolved to nine waves by the time the Holly North, a.k.a. Galaxy 13, was manned. That precedent led the galactic forces to excellence, as it was an example that is strategically heavenly against space pirates. Then there are the five starships that are warship classed. They keep nine in each manned galaxy and another thousand around the sea of stars on random schedules, so that pirates and villains can never study their movements. Calculating nothing at all, each captain of a vessel does what they want but follow the same outline of the galactic forces as everyone else. This crime-fighting organization is basically the police, sheriffs, homeland, CIA, and FBI of the Sea of Stars. Without the inferiority of the 21st century law enforcement and this word to the 21st century. Now let's talk some shit about the characters who represent the galactic forces. Paul Mester. He got his badge at 23. Fresh out of college, studying war strategy, psychology, sociology, and aerology. It's always a tremendous honor to serve, even one term as a galaxy commissioner. But it's more honorable living as one for a decade. His goal is set, still retains the title, and the might that keeps our Milky Way safe. It's his intellect you have to watch out for. Because all one-man armies have one thing in common. Their gray matter is not to be fucked with. The precedent of the past keeps us all safe, but his last name is a testament to blasting criminal kind. All the way away. You can catch him every morning, after he has woken up to freshen up. Sipping on a giant bottle of water and returning his cloaked cannons to hundreds of miles away from his warship. Does it proudly at the top viewing deck every morning to instill in everyone that he meant that campaign. 15 years ago, that he would truly be a Galaxy Commissioner. Galaxy Commissioner of Solar System 1. Gravy. Got his badge when he was 24. Fresh out of college, studying culinary arts, psychology, psychiatry, biology, and espionage. His career has been centered around interacting with as many people as possible to get the scoop on the best recipes as possible equating a master cookbook out of it to appease the masses in a lot of scenarios. He has spent a lot of time in desolate areas where the galactic forces enhanced through bringing up the village to a town, to a city, to a province, as well as tending to unmanned planets and workers that formed them. He has appeased so many tongues that when he began campaigning for the commissioner position, he was voted in easily. From nutrients to flavor to texture to arrow oil, his recipes are the best throughout all of the galaxies. They even mimic his pieces across the galaxies and dimensions to the point he has a restaurant in his honor in Edgemer. His handsomeness is recognizable as much as his battling Burberry pie. That smell alone usually makes criminals act right. But if they don't, they're about to get their shit dropped. Galaxy Commissioner of Solar System 6 Diablo Got his badge when he was 23. Fresh out of college, studying aerology, psychology, criminology, and avionics. 
Through his lengthy career, he has fought crime with the best of them to become one of the best. Being born as a summoner means you can acquire spirits of any element and ones of the unknown too. He decided to go the route of primary elements and added a little fantasy to it by choosing Shadow lastly. Making his hell on earth quest a sure thing, the more he developed his seven powers. He sought God after God until he found a perfect seven to spend a lifetime with. A lifetime of murdering villainy is what they understood, and with him angelically keeping it aggressive, he is the untouching. For what he does in superpower chambers keeps his galaxy safe. Because outer space is made up of so much darkness, his shadow category allows him to teleport any way he desires while in the superpower chambers. As soon as a distress signal reaches his eyes or ears, Intel sends him the coordinates and he makes a decision while he teleports on how he's going to annihilate any pirates within range. Just a menace to the menaces. Galaxy Commissioner of Solar System 9 Mr. Monster Got his badge when he was 24. Fresh out of college, studying history, psychology, psychiatry, weaponry, and criminology. Throughout his long career, he has been on the following details. Transport, seal, SWAT, commander, and ending with warden duties. He still retains his level Omega power as the warden of the Oopsies Containment Prison, built specifically for super beings. Guarded by a very humane detail that tends to making sure they serve their time. Without casualties, whether they serve it timely or mentally. I mean, if you ask me, I can, you know, explain it, but moving along. He has prevented at least 200 prison breaks on his 10-year duty of being the warden. Isn't always able to prevent breakouts, but doesn't mind wrapping some hands around a criminal and putting them in a place of the escapee. The prison is in the middle of nowhere, like any space colony, but good luck on getting through and back out of the defense mechanisms if you aren't wise enough to teleport in and out. He's the Oopsies Containment Prison Warden. Naxon. Got his badge when he was 24. Fresh out of college, studying astrology, piloting, gundaming, and espionage. He was looking forward to serve, but he's a guide. Guides aren't allowed to be on a force and serve with none guides. Insurance policy. Instead, he was immediately interviewed for the key item ship. During the interview, F.A. Sacia provided the questions and the tour, but since they aren't allowed to be seen by the general public, they are always in orbit and can't be seen unless you're the captain of the ship. Guys are usually reserved for immortal duties. This ship is one of them, but he fell in love with them after they said he passed the test with 100%. Because he was given this duty, he was able to practice heroism everywhere he wanted to take the ship and even when he finally gets orders. Full Captain of the Galactic Forces Bumbo Got her badge when she was 24. In the story, she'll be 25. Everybody else is much older. Fresh out of college, studying mechanics, endology, psychology, and sociology. A natural brainiac with a joy for ending monsters. Looking forward to being on a monster handling detail. Was halted when she showed signs of somebody that could finally keep full Captain Nex and company on the key item ship. Because of the three majors she absorbed, she would be comfortable around a peaceful FACC. That took her out of the loop with being around common folk, but gives her a chance at adventure in a very stealthy way. The opportunity to see all worlds and dimensions for a lifetime seemed amazing. The modus operandi was sold to her when Nexon messaged her way before the deadline to choose her duties, hinting that she has a chance to bring more fame to her house because she'll be directly around all of the heroes around all of the worlds. She's a star lieutenant of the Galactic Forces. When I began everyone's summary, it started with what they studied in college. There are prerequisites to taking up a position of maintaining society. Psychology is the first one on the list and has always been the first one on the list since the 21st century. They have no time in hiring anyone without the means to further their own education and without a sound mental space. For everyone with a badge will protect everyone without a badge, then protect their own. The Galactic Forces is for the people. Segregation, racism, bigotry, and that Nazi bullshit was abolished before they set out the journey of the universe. Then there's the protection of the Utopia Protocol. 
and I'm sorry for getting upset at <laughs> this statement, but the collective forces have only 13 people that can gain access to the confines of the utopia protocols around the planets. Kudos if you can tell that galaxy commissioners are the ones with those. Good luck on trying to take their badges from them. They are coded to their DNA RNA. They have to be re-registered with their officer every hour they are sitting up. They work with the same technology of the Utopia Protocol. Their wave is short length, but enough to get enough DNA RNA to make sure they are being carried by their officer. If not, their coma wave is activated and you do not want to be caught with their badge. You do not want to wake up in prison years later for that offense. And no, I won't tell you how long the coma is induced for insurance purposes. So don't ever think you can stop the Utopia Protocol. History has it that humanity repeats itself, never no more. The atrocities, so many things have been wiped out. Those that live on space colonies, not under the jurisdiction of the galactic forces, do not have the Utopia Protocol installed in them. There's more than plenty of them. Those space colonies are where majority of today's criminals are raised. They try their damnness with making sure humanity is toe the line with never returning to the dark side. It's a lot of work to keep the peace, but the galactic forces know nothing other than keeping the peace. For a pain-free life is the light we all need before going into the inevitable darkness. Laying all jokes aside, this is now the time to be a cop, policeman, policewoman, officer, deputy, sheriff, or trooper. Because there are no incompetents with a badge. At all. That psychology degree is a motherfucker, right? But for those that believe in brawn and want to protect the sanctity of a clean society, become a force. Everyone will thank you, and even you will be protected, because once you understand criminal kind in any world, your license to kill will never be in vain. So, that's time to talk about all of the other forces that are in this image, and the next image, and so on and so forth. Now, find Mr. Monster, Diablo Nexon, Bumbo, Gravy, and Powermaster. The characters close to them, Amari, Gokinets, Flowers, Panami, and Gyro, are important to them. They are their direct staff, sidekicks if you desire to use that term. The Galaxy Commissioners don't technically need a sidekick, but it's always best to be out in the field with a partner. And they aren't people that came in second during their campaigns. Those are usually younger forces. Mr. Monster's detail is in the single digits. This is a very small colony of civilians, but they keep the prison running. Those are the only three forces on that colony. And surprise. Uh. <laughs> it's your nigga for hindering. He is one of the civilians as a helper because he's immortal and has no reason to take it back yet. Still atoning. For creating curse 4444, but you'll find out about them in another post. Oh snap, I forgot the freeze. One day, um, I was scrolling Instagram and you know, I follow a bunch of pages that look out for black women. And there was a situation where a little girl was killed and her last name was the freeze. And you can do that if you have enough money to change your last name to anything you want. So I made this character. Um, her last name is the freeze, even though the character was already established. She didn't have a name yet, but there's going to be a chapter where Galagos is going to be like crunch, stop your ship, put in these coordinates, go there now because of a distress signal. And that's how the freeze was brought into the story because she's going to be one of the very few um forces that are 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 uh if I can talk right are on one of the important planets for humanity that make up the black acid stuff which helps with getting rid of black holes and even though I just said that the universe is infinity people with uh uh people with the superpower of black holes they can make black holes out of anything they can put them anywhere in the universe put them on the surface of a planet don't matter they can do anything they want to with them um, in a black acid helps with breaking it down and will be used in an alien invasion. And she is going to be on, she's going to be the force on one of the most important black acid forms. And the aliens are going to go there. And when this distress signal hit, Galagos is going to be like, go there now because we got people to save and we got humanity to save. That's the freeze. Now let's take a look at the 13 galaxy commissioners. 
These characters can be considered the Omega of the Omegas. Their powers have very, 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 very times, probably 300, minute to little to small amounts of loopholes. It's like a damn molecule. So good luck. But before you go, let's get your will in order. 1. Palmaster. 2. Honey. 3. Kovar Rubius. 4. Henemy. 5. Valter. 6. Gravy. 7. Norozo. 8. Melrose. 9. Diablo. 10. Zogrero. 11. Hurricanos. 12. Asol. And 13. Genlock. Now, I think I talked way too quickly. Maybe I'm getting the hang of this way too quickly. But hopefully you understood where I was coming from with having an actual correct law enforcement entity in a world. All right. This is how things should be ran. My imagination land is a very lovely place. <laughs> Cause I don't mess with none of this stuff. This stuff made me mad. I was reading it. Cause I'll be, when I, when I make up these worlds, I consider them the perfect worlds. So these have none of the atrocities at all. But this one happens to take place as if we are in an infinity universe. Well, um, you know, if you've seen a video on YouTube or if you know the science behind it, uh, this universe is constantly moving and spreading and that's why black holes are being created and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I don't know the exact science behind it, but eventually this is going to become a whole universe of black holes. But in this universe, it doesn't, um, it's a, it's a perfect universe. It doesn't expand. It's at its, uh, capacity of an actual universe. And everything is, uh, it stays in place and all of the galaxies move how they move, even though it's infinite and you will never find the end of it. Now, this allows, uh, for all kind of things to happen, which is why magic exists, doesn't, uh, exists in this world, if I could talk right. And humans, they mean to exist forever. Uh, this set of humans. And they have made up all of these resources and all of this technology that ensures that they can have fake ozones on space colonies. They act like real ozone layers and it creates a, a sensation of sunlight, clouds and stuff like that in a specific area of the space colony. And that's how rain is functioned and um, pollution is cleaned up and things get uh, purified through weather. It's a lovely thing. And because of, you know, Splashworth's character, he, uh, he resides from the house of Wohood and they are from Edgemere and they have these water crystals that are just this lovely thing of magic, right? And you touch it and water will come out of it and water will come out of it with, uh, with your thought and it will stop once you touch it again. This is how spaceships have water on them now. So they have that magic. They have all kind of other stuff. And when they designed the Utopia Protocol after leaving Earth Zero for the first time and starting to spread out and finding other galaxies to man them, the Utopia Protocol, um, still gonna make a separate post for it, but it's a, a very small device. They make one for every, um, major city around the planets. Um, they put one on every space colony to keep them right. And they have the badges that they are the only 13 people at the time that can touch it. If you are in a galaxy commission or a position, you are the only people that can um go to a utopia protocol. Because if you try to get close to it, you're going to end up in a situation that happened on Resident Evil, the first movie with them on um, uh, cross lasers and get your shit sliced up. Uh, and nobody can get out of it cause, um, the utopia protocols are in areas that have the anti super beam fluid in it. So nobody with superpowers can make anything activate. They can't even teleport within a zone because of the anti super beam fluid. And the reason why they made only the galaxy commissioners, um, able to get close to the 
Utopia Protocol is because if too many people have access, we're going to have an issue. And we can't have um, anybody who uh, becomes a psychic and can ward off the wave that it sends off and alter the machine and make it come off. Um, so this technology that they made to render people super beingless around them and making sure that they have the contraptions to keep people out of it. It's great. Uh, I think I'm going to end it there because I don't want to ramble too long and whatnot, but the galactic forces are generally the law enforcement that you see in this world in any country, but they don't, act in a way of fear they have the psychology of knowing when people are you know upset and things like that and can cause issues and because of the utopia protocol in most cases there is peace on the planets now in the small villages and towns like that they can still make criminals too um and then they can grow up to be uh turn into career criminals then turn into fucking villains and we have a uh, situation but in a lot of cases, the planets don't have to worry about much, but it's the space colonists without it. And that's how you get people like Correcto, who like to go around and do what he does, which is called correcting the masses. <laughs> that boy, wow, he loves the 21st century chaos. Fucking love it. Fucking love making up that character. You have no idea. But the Galactic Forces, here they are. Hope you enjoyed it. And keep it peaceful. Until the next time. Mwah.